All right. Welcome back to episode 13 of the Rally Report podcast. Really excited about this one. We got someone special. He's the man who's won it all. The trophy collector, pretty much everything out there in the junior circuit, and has also won the most recent college individuals title and two-time winner of the CSA team championships. Warm welcome to Marwan Tarek. What's up? How are you? Thank you, Sean, for that introduction. Uh, really happy to be here with you on this podcast. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the to the call. Yeah. Well, first of all, appreciate you doing this, even though it's pretty late in the evening. For those of you who don't know, we're doing this at nine in the evening. But um, yeah, I had to have you on considering yeah. what happened this past week. And big, big shout out to College Squash, single-handedly carrying the squash content for January with TFC being canceled. <laughs> so if you're listening to this right now, cancel your PSA subscription for this month because you're not uh-huh. getting shit from it and start hopping on these <laughs> CSA live streams because it's popping off. But yeah, Marwan, let's start off with a little recap. What happened this past week? Because it was filled with action. If you don't mind, should we start off with the uh, pen match? Because that was a big one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, it was a good fight. Like, both teams were uh, just like showed up and like, you know, in forces. Uh, we, we went down to Philly, like on, uh, on Friday to play them on Saturday. Yeah. Um, we were expecting like a tough fight, you know, like Penn and uh, Penn uh, are now like the top seed and we were the second seed. So, um, we knew that like it's gonna go down to the last wire and like mm-hmm. first wave went on like really strong. Like, I, like in general, like I like playing and I'm like the Penn Squirts. Oh, you do like, you uh, do like playing there? I, do, I, I mean, yeah, you want the individuals there. <laughs> individuals there. So, like, that was like, I didn't have any problems with like, you know, going down and just like, having having this match there so um yeah just like first wave went on like we went uh, two one up on the first wave second wave we were three one up i think and um and uh like we in two of the matches we were two love up and uh in one one of like in our number five match and two all and six love up in in another match and like our number seven yeah yeah and, uh, but you know like you know again like this is like squash this is why we play the sport and like like the the excitement and just like the like the pen guys fought really hard to come back and like they they won both of these matches and they they were four three up and i was playing with ali um when that happened and he was probably like two one up and uh yeah it was were like, you aware course, of like, you know, even during your match with Ali? the team situation or is this something you ask about to your teammates in between the games? Um, not, not really. Like I usually try to just like focus on the match yeah. and like, just like, you know, I don't want like any distractions. I just want to like, you know, focus on like what I'm doing, my game plan. Like I don't want anything else to like, you know, like mm. just interrupt my, my, you know, like train of thoughts or like my, whatever I do on, on court. Yeah. So, uh, so like, yeah, like, like you know, like every match with Addy is always like tough. Yeah, uh, he he like he he was the better player on the day. Uh, played really well. Like was really composed, and you know he he um uh he, like they dwelt to like you know uh, win the match and like clinch it for them. So um yeah, like that was that was like of course like probably like it was my first loss with the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, like first team loss. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with like five uh, so definitely like something that you know was hard, but you know like uh, I'm happy that we like we hopefully like we got another another shot against them at nationals. Like if if we both made it like that far to to compete again, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Like we'll see then if yeah. Uh, well, we for run. those of you who are not up to speed with what's happening in college squash, I'm trying to I'm going to give a context. So pretty much Harvard has built an unbeatable team since your arrival. But, you know, this year, it seems you guys got some chinks in the armor and Penn's kind of creeping its way up. And I guess this was such a big matchup and it was very hyped on both parts. And, you know, it also is special considering, I think, your rivalry with Ali. You guys, I swear to God, you guys play like 30 times. With someone like Ali, do you have a set game plan going in? Like, you know who you're playing against and you know what to do. And like, is this something you go over before matches? 
Yeah, it's usually like, you know, uh, like me as a player, I like to have like game plans before like every match. Of course, like you have like your own game plan that you try to execute mm-hmm. like every time you step on court. And there's like just like the specifics that would work better against like certain players. So, of course, like against Ali, there's like some tactics, yeah, that like I, um, I have like going in the match, but it, like it, it always like with him, it like comes down to like, you know, like just trying to, to like, you know, be the be like wanting it more, you know, like on the day and just right. Okay, well, Marwan clearly not spilling the secrets because they're playing again soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I don't have it like on top on the top of my head yeah. now, but it's just like in general, like every match, even like if you have like the best tactics, it's like like the, with like all the pressure and like you know the nervousness, like the execution might be tougher. Yeah. So, um, but like yeah, like. If if I was like to answer your question, yeah, definitely like not 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 only Ali too, like with everyone I play with, I try to like have like a set game plan and like Victor and I do really well with like coaching each other oh. like, before and like during and like even after the matches, mm-hmm. just like talking about every every player and like what game plan would work the most against them. How was how was the crowd by the way? That was that annoying. <laughs> I mean, like that's fine. like that's you know that's what what we expect yeah, yeah. anyways. We've been like I've played sophomore year at Trinity. I've played like at Cornell. You know, like these are all top crowds. Even like freshman year, we had like a lot of home games. Yeah. Uh, that like we had like also like a top crowd. You know, for our opponents. <laughs> so like this is this is actually like, the beauty of college squash, yeah. which is like you get like the crowd crowd involved a lot, and like being biased to like a certain team, which is not like the case i think in like the psa mm. so i don't know like i i i don't think i have any problem with it like it's it's very enjoyable just like if you if you had to choose one school which would you say is the worst crowd um uh, worst crowd like so far maybe like so far has been trinity i mean the worst crowd also is the best crowd like it goes both ways so yeah, yeah. exactly like yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, like I mean, if I was to pick like uh, the worst crowd, like it would be like you know maybe maybe us. Yeah, Harvard. Like, Harvard we, is pretty nasty we, up there as well. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of people down there, you know. Like even my friends on campus, they all they're always like very excited to like come and watch our games. So maybe it's it's us too. Yeah. So okay, moving on to that tough loss. You guys lost six three, and then. Back to back, you guys are up against Princeton now, who are ranked three in the country, and you guys edged out a five four, five four win. So I was also really close, and I got the opportunity to watch your match, and it kind of got feisty, right? A lot of pushing, pushing and shoving going on. Yeah, I mean, again, like, um, like first of all, like the Princeton match, like coming down from coming back from from the loss, yeah. it was like you know it needed like character to just like step in there and, you know, like fight again, like the very next day. So like, you know, like, the team showed like a real uh, character, like while for doing that and just like showing up at Princeton with also like we had our number four. Yeah. What what happened? Is he, is he injured right now? What's going on? Yeah. So like he, um, I think like, like in his match against, uh, against Penn, like his opponent, like, you know, like unintentionally just stepped on his foot. Mm-hmm. So like, I think he rolled his ankle. So it was very like swollen by the, by the next day and like he couldn't walk on it. So like we had to rest him. That's crazy. He finished uh, the match but, out though. <laughs> yeah. he It happened at nine, seven in the third. He was two level up and it was nine, seven. He was nine, seven down. So, wow. You know, he's a beast. Yeah. yeah. Finished the okay. game. But yeah. Uh, so like we had to sit him down. So like every, everyone from like five to nine, and like to ten, like was pushed up, up a spot, which was which was tough. It's also concerned. You know? I'm sure it was concerning. Concerning. I mean, Princeton's three in the country, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you, you don't want to, you don't want to play without your full lineup against. Yeah, Princeton, right? without your number four too. So, um, but yeah, like everyone was pushed down a spot. Like we had, we had a good showing. Uh, it, um, I think it also like came down to the wire. Like we were for all. I was on court. I didn't know like we were for all, but like. You know, two days in a row decide their matches. It was, you know, not again, not again. Of, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I had like a, a good tool of lead, so like I just held on to it, and you know, like uh, was able to finish things off. But uh, yeah, like in general, like uh, I'm gonna say it again, like 
the team did really like well with just like coming back and like there was like this match between Yusuf and Victor which was amazing yeah. amazing match um, so yeah like um, it was very tough as you said but like I think we did well with are you like, good you know, are you guys so, both good with coaching each other in, in those times Cause especially so you guys have tough matches all the time and I know you mentioned earlier that you guys get along in terms of that how intense does like you guys know exactly what you want to hear and that's all figured out between the two of you yeah yeah, I mean, like Victor and I, like came came to like Harvard yeah. as like you know the biggest <laughs> rivals and juniors, but like we kind of grew on each other and just like we started, you know, like by the second semester here, like becoming like the closest friends, uh, just like talking about squash all the time, watching squash together, uh, just you know playing like training, uh, like not every day, but like training like three four times a week together. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Like now, I think we understand each other like so well on and off court. Like, and like I know when he's having a good day on court. I know when he's having not having a good day. He knows the same with me. Like he knows how like you know like the good like good trigger words like to like just like wake mm-hmm. me up like you know if I'm not like sticking to my game plan. Uh, so like I think yeah, definitely like having someone who's like who loves who's like as committed as Victor, of course, and like who understands so much about the game. Mm-hmm really like so helpful like with you know just like the coaching in general gotcha yeah wow so yeah so you guys pulled that off and then now a couple days ago you guys played drexel and on it you guys yeah. get did get the win six three i saw but honestly no disrespect yeah. that was a lot closer than i thought and i wanted to talk to yeah. your match about your match with matthias who i promise yeah. i will have on I'm just waiting for the right <laughs> moment um he's from Colombia, and that seemed like a marathon match 12 10 in the fifth <laughs> give us a little match recap yeah. on this one yeah so um yeah again like uh like first of all like drexel were like really fought hard that day and like it was a very fair fight like nothing ugly or anything oh, yeah. it was like pure like squash fight you know like this is like a competition that we wanted this is the competition where like we want to have in our season and like we want to have our team go through and just like test our character and this is like this was the type of day where, like, we were playing on their courts, like, their courts, like, and, like, really nice courts, but, like, the conditions there is, like, not, you know, like, that easy to play. What, what do you mean by that? Very, what are the conditions like in the Drexel? Like, very hot, very hot down there, and they just, like, I feel like there's less oxygen because it's, it's down there, like, beside the swimming pools. Mm-hmm. So, it was just, like, it's it's not like our courts, you know? So, like, it was it was kind of hard, like, uh, on the day, yeah, just like show up and and also like yeah, have them just like coming out um, at us and you know like believing that they could like beat us, which is which is good. So I believe like we were we were, I don't know like how the the score went exactly, but I remember like I was, uh, they, it was five court system, mm-hmm. so like four guys, uh, so because like we don't include the number ten. Mm-hmm. Like four guys play. I think we went three one up on the first wave, and then they got two back. Uh, so it's, it's uh, tied up. No, they got two back. We got one back. Oh, so okay, like so you guys were still okay. Four, right, right. four three, and I was on court, and Adam was uh, who's our number four because George didn't yeah. play too. Uh, was also on court. Have you played Matthias before? Actually, it, surprisingly, I haven't. Even though, like, we were like we were in the same age, yeah. like played the same tournaments, like saw him so many times in the junior tour. So this but, was like, a new yeah. experience for you going to this match. This was yeah, my first time playing him. Like, didn't know what to expect. I knew he was like a very strong player. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I I've watched him like a lot, but uh, yeah, like it was. I've never like stepped on court with him, so like that was. What, what that would was you say was the biggest thing that threw you off while playing him? Um, um, I don't know. He just like sometimes I just feel oh he's like he's so tired now. Like he's not gonna uh, he's not yeah. gonna, uh, like keep retrieving these shots and like, <laughs> like some way he just like finds a way to just like dig deep and just like you know lob yeah out of trouble every single time. And you know it's very deceiving like how fit he is uh, because he like he he could like he could be tired but he just doesn't. Stop oh, he looks bent over, but then he's retrieving everything. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so yeah, so I mean, that went to so tell me a little bit. So, uh, fifth now you're entering the fifth game. 
Yeah. How, how was Fifth it? game, I think both of us were like super tired. You were tired as well. Like, I feel like uh, yeah, I never like, see you it bench was, over. Uh, no, it was it was because like it was such like a long a long match. Yeah. Like we uh, we both like I think we passed like the hour mark. Mm-hmm. Maybe like yeah, like more than like, sixty five minutes, <sighs> seventy minutes, and like it was just crazy. Like how like I went into the fifth game always like you know. Like definitely want to win it, but like at the same time, he like I know that he wants it too. Like he's, you know, playing on his courts. Mm-hmm. Like um, his like that his crowd is there, <laughs> but uh, you know, like it was also like very. It was actually not not close at the start. Like he had like a good three love lead, and then he got like a seven four lead. Oh, he had the lead. lead. Like, seven, five. Yeah, 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 it was crazy. Like, I remember this like this one rally at like seven all. Like I literally, Sean, like put the ball like everywhere on the court. <laughs> just like move him everywhere, and he just like keeps coming back. <laughs> uh, but that, like that point was so critical because like it was like such a long rally, long, 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 and then yeah, like, I I ended up winning it, which was like good because I won it, and like, because I felt like I moved him everywhere. So, like, it's like he's done. Tired. He's done now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But also like he, you know, like. You know, I never gave up and just like kept running. And like, I took like a 10 8 lead, had too much balls, uh, so many like let balls and like so many calls. Yeah, I think like someone told me that we we spent like 20 minutes from 10 8 until like the match finished. Oh, so it's just like just traffic issues, of course, yeah. like uh, long rallies, like no one wants to risk it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't make it that far to like just 10 on the last point, yeah. So that was yeah, it was definitely like a like a very a very entertaining match. Yeah. Like I've got you know like so many texts from like people you know um, like ex ex players on the team and just like people in general who watch college squash like and like how like they love this match and yeah, it's bullshit that there was no they, fucking uh, coverage on that on video or am I missing out? Because I was like, where the where the hell is the video? And then. Well, actually, there was like live stream, but people told me like like the stream broke like halfway through oh. the fifth, or, like before the fifth game, which was. Do you awesome. honestly, with the top ten teams, there needs to be coverage, like a complete yeah. outlet of coverage for people, because I think people are really interested to see, and you guys are top yeah. top quality players, and. Yeah, but no, definitely, yeah. Um, was, yeah, especially this match. Like for me, at least, like I want to have like a video of this match because like. It's probably one of the craziest matches I've played in college. Yeah. Course, you know, so damn. I wanted, yeah. Um, and then yeah. I, have, I have a couple questions. I saw on the No Context P- uh, PSA, it's a meme page. So Matias have his shirt off. Yeah. Give give me some context on why uh, he had his shirt off for this. Oh, okay, so like this was <laughs> this this picture was actually after we finished the match. Okay, okay. Like I, as I told you, like we were both like super tired. Yeah. Like night, like more than like probably like ninety five minute match or like hundred minute yeah. match. So like, I even like even though like I clinched it for like for Harvard like to win to win like five three and then like Adam went on to win it also like so mm-hmm. we won six three at then, but I like couldn't even celebrate. <laughs> I just like I just like went but like give my like team back like a fist bump. Yeah. And just shook his hands and just like dropped on my <laughs> knees like, as you can see like in the picture. Yeah. And he just like same like, you know, like shook hands and just like took out took off his shirt and just like walked around the court. Like we were both like weren't like speaking or saying anything, but we just like you know, like we we admired like the fight. It's one of those so matches much. where it's just it was such a good exactly. match. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted exactly. to show yeah people what i'm talking about here <laughs> this is the picture this is the only coverage we got i feel like but yeah just for people who are watching the youtube that's i'm showing yeah. the picture there's also another picture i don't know if you saw it on my um on my story oh, I did that catch the, yeah that was i think that was after the seven all rally that's we both like were like <laughs> leaning down and we just we couldn't we couldn't breathe gotcha um yeah. wow see so are you how are you feeling physically right now <laughs> You need a couple of days um, off, or you're fine. I uh, so I like we finished our match Tuesday, yeah. and then we had to like take like a six hour ride, like five and a half hour ride to uh, back to campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like came back here at, like twelve a.m. Uh, so it took took to you, took Wednesday off, and um, and uh, Thursday today, like we had like uh, a few sessions. Like my body is is like kind of, like a little bit sore. It's but, fine. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, we we we're playing again on Saturday, so <laughs> gotta get the ready going. Yeah, and it's it's a rigorous schedule once January and February yeah. hits. Now I'm curious, um, how are you guys feeling as a team, and how are you feeling individual in terms of confidence? I, I I'm sure the pen loss was big for you guys, but are you yeah. guys still feeling confident for the nationals? Because honestly, that's where everything gets decided anyway. Like, how are you guys feeling? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, like. You know, uh, of course, like the morale wasn't like you know high yeah. after the loss. It was, it was, um, it was tough uh, losing, uh, but you know we bounced back and like this is like what we proved uh, that we could do. Like when we played against Princeton, and then when we beat Drexel and like you know tough matches, like they all like they weren't like easy three love mm-hmm. matches, right? Like they were all like hard fought wins. So um, and I think like. The season is like, or nationals is like one month away. So like a lot of improvements can be done. A lot of, um, you know, a lot of like takeaways could be like made from the last, last uh, match against Penn. And, and like, I think, you know, this like goes without saying, but like we're, we're, we still believe that we could, we could win nationals, you know, like we, we would have this belief. Until, oh, fuck like, yeah. Very, yeah, last, yeah. Very of course. rally. Of course. You know, yeah. And like nationals end. So. Uh, we still believe that we could win. I think we have, we have the team to win it. We have the team to, to make that happen. To to win nationals again. Um, like personally, I I I love the team. I love my, like of course I love my team, and I just like love this moments where like, oh, we're gonna fight together as a team. Yeah, like, it's it's gonna be. It's gonna be us going to war, you know. Like it's it's as if like going to war. Like these are the people I want to fight with. These are the yeah. people I want to like, go to combat with, you know. So um, definitely, like, yeah, it, like we took a hit like after the loss, but this like I think would only like help us like to like work harder and just like come back strong. Dude, that's getting me happy. It ain't fucking happening again, I guess. The loss, but yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I I think honestly. As good as you guys were in the previous years, I think this is just so much fun. Just as a spectator, yeah. just seeing how close it is. Yeah. yeah. All right. So speaking, of, I know you kind of mentioned this earlier, but I wanted to ask you, given the history between you and Victor during juniors, I think a lot of people were curious about the dynamic between the two of you. I know you mentioned you, it seems like you guys have such a great dynamic, yeah. but h- how was like the initial impressions on each other when you guys got on? Was it kind of fishy of like oh i don't really want to be that close with you well, how was how was that like and yeah talk me through that yeah uh, I, I i already knew him since like before i came here and we actually talked uh, when he was making the decision i think or like when he took the decision that like oh we're gonna be in the same college together that's like we talked about it even before we came on campus mm-hmm. like, where we saw each other on campus um i think having victor here oh like maybe like to like just address like the first few uh, like first semester together, it was of course like kind of you know you know weird in the start. Yeah, yeah. Like having the person you, like you just trained to beat in juniors, being like one of your teammates and just like training with you every single day. Which I mean, it was hard for me, but I think like just things went on like pretty quickly to like for us to understand and just like appreciate that like we're actually making each other better. Right, right. right. You know, people sometimes just like go to college and just stop trying. Yeah. A lot of people actually do. And like you'd see like their level of squash, like they go in as like one of the top juniors and they just like, you know, go down like, a, you know, because they, there's just, just like no motivation to like train hard or like, you know, um, no competition, like, to, like no one to, to just like challenge you on a like daily basis. Yeah. This is something like I think Victor and I like had, which is, which is very special that like, I think we push each other every single day uh, at practice and uh, we make each other like better. Like we share the same interests. We, we understood like from the first year that we are here to like, to compete together, not against each other, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, this is where, like, this is like, was like, I think the maturity like that we got them through from, from like juniors to becoming like, you know, like PSA and right. like, college players. So uh, that was like, I think it also like in full honesty that happened like really quickly. Like we didn't have to struggle with just like, you know, being, you know, like very beefy or anything. Yeah, right, right. Like wanted to prove like, oh, like I want to play one on the team. No, you want like no, I want to play one on the team. No, like we had this this like mentality that like whoever deserves the win, or I would sorry deserves the number one spot, is gonna is gonna have to work hard for it, is gonna have to prove that he's worth it. 
and is going to have to just like show up against other teams, you know? Right. So, uh, yeah, it's like something I, I really, really, really like, I'm thankful for. It's like having Victor here with me and like, he's, he's graduating this year. So I'm, I'm going to spend the next year without him, but Oof. yeah, definitely like, yeah. Uh, having him for three years here was like, such a blessing mm-hmm. to like, just have someone challenging me and like making me like, you know, not be like complacent in any right. way possible, like on and off the court. So. Not, not to attack at you, but you've been, you've been playing too for majority of your time right now. Or how are how are challenge matches like with him? Do you dread and, those days? I mean, again, like I think he uh, he's very like he's like Victor in general. Like he's very organized and just like he has his life together. I think more than I did, mm-hmm. especially like in the first in the first year. So um, he also like I think he took like a gap year after high school and played professionally, which like made him like you know improve so much. When I came on campus, campus I was uh, I I just like finished the World Juniors. I lost in the final two and stuff. Right, time. right. So I was also, I think I, like we were both playing like in a high level, but like when you like when you just like go through like the first few weeks of school here, yeah, and like you know in another country with like mm-hmm. you know without your parents with you and like without your friends, without your teachers. And like, you know, it's just so different. Like the culture difference is, is huge. Yeah. was huge. And, uh, and just like whoever, whoever could like adapt quicker was gonna like, you know, That's was gonna right. have like, I think the edge on court, but like in general, also like, I, I, I actually don't think like, I've never thought about it. Like, Oh, Victor plays one and I play two. I've never thought about it that way. I just like, you know, I try to, I like in challenge matches, of course, like I, I want to beat him. I, I, it's very hard though. Like you, of course you would, you would know that, but like he, he makes it hard, like everything, every single time. And like, uh, sometimes it's close, sometimes it's not, but like, again, like I, I, uh, if I wanted, like, if I could have played one or like, if I, how do I put that? Like, I of course like I wanted to play one, yeah, if I could, but I think he's the one who deserves it more, like, and mm-hmm. has been more consistent throughout like all the three years. So like, he he's definitely the one to like you know to win that spot. Well, yeah, I mean it'll be interesting with him graduating as well. Yeah, got another season. Exactly. So I, I I think a lot of people are always interest intrigued by that dynamic, especially the fine the amount of finals you guys played together in during the juniors, yeah. and then seeing. It's pretty evident seeing how close you guys are, even off the court. And yeah. I think a lot of people were interested. But now I think I need yeah. to address the biggest interesting question that I think everyone wants to know about is your current situation. Uh, coming off such a strong junior career, it seems you've taken a step back from the pro circuit. And I want to ask you why. Yeah. And another big question is, are yeah. you skeptical of going professional after you graduate? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question, and like I, I actually like try to avoid that question a lot. Yeah, not not because not because like it's sensitive in any way, but mm-hmm. it's just because like I'm kind of you know like you know I kind of don't don't know like what I'm gonna do mm-hmm. uh, after college. But like uh, like as we speak now, like of course I want to take like my chances of like going pro. Of course I wanna I wanna see like how how far I could go like on the pro circuit and like. How far I could achieve. Uh, I just think like I like I also like I play some like PSA tournaments here and there. Yeah, we. I know you Maybe won the Boston time. Boston Open recently. Yeah, yeah, uh, that was in, uh, in October. Yeah, I mean, it seems um, like, but, like you don't I'm play not... a lot, but when you do, you, you just fucking win it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Though. Like I, I think like as long as I'm, like I'm I'm a student, because like for me at least, like if I'm gonna do something, I want to do like I want to put like hundred mm-hmm. percent so that I could like. 100% justify my results. Mm-hmm. So, and I think like, it's so hard to just like focus on like the pro tour when you're like a student athlete, Yeah, you know, in a, in a sense, because like, I, I love, you know, like Harvard, I love like my life here. I, I love the interactions I have with like students every day. I love the interactions I have with, with professors every day. I just like the, the, the like the small chats, like in the dining halls mm-hmm. or like, you know, if like I'm just standing in line to get coffee, I just like appreciate that so much. And, this is something uh, that's that was like very new to me, like before I came here from Egypt. So I just want to make the best out of it. 
you know, like make the best out of like every day I spend here on campus and to make, you know, the most out of every relationship or friendship I have here uh, during like my four years. And then after that, I, I like, I want to keep my options open too. Like I want to keep like the squash there because this is like my passion. This has been my passion since I was like, like seven right, years yeah. old. So, um, yeah, definitely something I, uh, uh, I, I, I like really think I want to do after college, but I, like at the moment, I just don't want to, I, I don't think I can fully commit to it because it would be unfair because I'm not going to give it like my hundred percent because I have also like other stuff to focus on, you know? That That is such an interesting take. Cause I think what's well, a unique case these past three, four years, seeing so many college players also juggle the pro circuit. We haven't really seen that before. And then, we have the one outlier, which is you, who yeah. you know is at that level clearly, but just hasn't been opting to play the pro circuit. And you know, yeah. people might not even know you, even though you've had such a successful junior career. I would say, like, I think like, this this is also like just me trying to like justify my case here. I think. Um, I like, as I told you, like, I, I want to make the, the most out of my four years at, mm. at Harvard and I, I, and like other people might just like other guy, other, um, student athletes or the like college squash players, uh, like in the Ivy schools or like in other schools might just like not, uh, care so much like about their like student life. Like I do. Right, you know, in in, in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, because like I just value it so much. Maybe this is like against, like maybe this is like holding me back from like from like like my PSE ranking, like which could be like so much better. But I think it's just like I've always like taken, you know, like life in general, like one step at a time. I think like timings is um timings like timing in general like, is really important and like, like everything happens yeah know? no i get it a lot of the instagram questions i got really showed what kind of student you are in college of absolute party animal from <laughs> 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 but no i'm kidding um is that i just want to like kind of go back to so yeah. you're when you win the world junior championship when you win british juniors and then you decide to go to harvard did you know is that something you were juggling even before you even arrived to Harvard being like having, like talking with your team, your family being like, I don't know if going professional is it's, I might, I'm questioning it. Was that already in the talks even before when you were going to Definitely. the States? Like, I, I would be lying if I didn't think, uh, Oh, like I might just go there and like, no, you know, compete anymore. And, um, and uh, this was something like that I talked a lot about with my parents, with my mm -hmm. coaches, with my team back home. But, you know, like at the end of the day, like we had, like we Egyptians, we love our role models and like we love having someone to look up to and just to like follow their path. Yeah. And I saw Ali for right. just like do it. And this was like how my family would sell to me, like that going to like Harvard would still like, could still make you like a good squash player while like, you know, having like a great degree from like one of the, one of like a, mm -hmm. the most prestigious colleges in the world. Right. You know? So, so I always had like that Ali Farag image, like in front of me and just like, Ali never played PSA when he was in college. Like, Oh, so and, like, you're, maybe, you're maybe, trying to say that everyone who's doing the pro circuit right now is doing it incorrectly. If they're trying to become world number one. <laughs> to say that. I think if like I spoke with Ali so much, right. like Ali yeah. is such like, a good mentor to me and like, like if you ask Ali right now, like, oh, do you do you regret not playing PSA when you were in college? He would say, no, I don't regret. I don't regret like anything. Like I think I made the right decision of just like, you know, making the best out of my three years here and and just like going pro after, you know. So yeah, I mean, worked out for. I like answer your question. Just like you know, like I, I before coming here, I knew that Ali done it has done it before and. And it, like it's of course like Ali was like one of the you know like the only people who have done it and like then Amanda did it yeah or, like Amanda did it with Ali but like because Ali was Egyptian like he came from like you know similar backgrounds so I thought oh okay then this is like this is my this is the person to follow yeah one follow up is are you concerned about Victor graduating 
because you're talking about being complacent and you know having someone around you that can push you. With him graduating yeah. next year, are you a little concerned? That's a good question. Like I actually, um, yes and no. I think like yes because I you know like having a top twenty player on your team is definitely like a big asset. Yeah. <laughs> like you wouldn't want to lose anyways, right? Yeah. Um, and I think no, because like, I think with like Victor leaving, like I'm going to have like, you know, higher, like more responsibility or like, mm. uh, you know, like just like I'll, I'll have to take like, maybe like be just like stay the way I am and just like full, fill his shoes that he like, he's leaving mm-hmm. because Victor has like a, such a big influence on the team and, uh, him leaving was definitely going to like, you know, leave like a lot of um, space in general. Like it would be like hard, you know, like on, on like the team we had in general and like maybe like on like our results in the, in the future. But like, I think it's just like the way I, I'm looking at it is like, oh, like here's another challenge of like you like having to like, you know, step, step up and just, you know, like work harder. And, uh, and like, hopefully if I'm playing the number one next year, they just like, you know, try to, um, to, like fulfill that position yeah. like he did and uh yeah just like um of course higher expectations so like definitely need to like work her work like harder with that yeah um i know we've talked a lot about the team aspect of things and i also i'd be remiss not to mention the individual championship that you're defending the title this this year how are you also feeling about that one with you know because in terms of seeding, I always feel like it should be you and Victor in the final, but it must be a nerve wracking week when both you and Victor are in the same draw. Again, going back to yeah. flipping from yeah. always being a teammates to competitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, no. Like, believe it or not, like, like freshman year, we were we were like roommates and individuals, and like we were supposed to be roommates and individuals like sophomore year, like the year I won it, uh-huh. and like the year he won it, I was his roommate, and I lost first round, and the year I won it. <laughs> He was supposed to be my roommate, but then like sad Abu Aish, if, if you yeah. if you know like he was my roommate then because like we were close from like the Egyptian national team when we were young. So like it's 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 very it's very weird I would say yeah. just like having to compete against each other while we both like have like a conflict of interest because like we of course like both of us wants to win. Yeah. And now like that we're not competing on the same team, like you know. It's in the, at the end of the day, it's an individual sport, and you just like wanna, yeah, you know, like you don't want to look for like personal glory, <laughs> but um, oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I would say like at the end of the day, we like if what made like the last two individuals like easier on us, it was like someone lost in the first round, so like. There was no conflict of interest. Yeah, I have right? a strong From feeling that's not going to be the case this year. Just saying. <laughs> I, I I have I have a strong feeling too. Uh, you know, like I I I don't know the the feeling, but like I don't know like how would that like feel like yeah. if we were like both in the semi like different semifinals, just like and like we both won and we were going back to the hotel, yeah. and, like, getting ready to play each other the next day. But I think like at this point, like we just know like that this like you know like bond that we have is like kind of kind of stronger you know like it's it's like at the end of the day like it won't like this is actually something that happened freshman year like in one of the challenge matches like like one of the challenge matches went to like five games it was like very beefy like mm-hmm. you know like very like a lot of arguments like both of us like had their like had we had like our ego like so high up because like you know first year like coming from juniors and stuff and brands right. we had but then like like first thing that happened after the match, like I went and like took my stuff and just like sat down. Like he he beat me like in five, so like I sat down like, you know like, like not like not by the courses like away. And then he like came came up to me and was like, "Hey, like we're all good, right?" And I told him, "Yeah, like what happens on court stays on court." So like you know that from that point on, like we knew that like you know like we have. We have our stuff on court, yeah. like we have our competition, the rivalry, everything. Yeah. But like when we're off court, like we're still teammates. We play for the same team. We share the same goals. So like, yeah, no, I I think you're you're very particularly good at you know when you're on court, you're battling like, and then yeah. I remember I I'm really close with Ali Hussein, and he says one of the biggest attributes about you is 
when you're on court, Marwan's completely different. He's a complete different animal and you yeah. can't expect anything. And then like, once you're off, he's friends with you, but like, it's, it seems you're really good at that. But yeah. no, like honestly on the spectator point, it's, it's been questionable how the fact that you guys keep dropping, <laughs> flipping off and the individuals dropping out and not playing each other. It's as if you guys are fixing the draw, making sure one guy <laughs> wins. <laughs> but I guess there'll be a real battle on the rooming situation with, you know, you win it when you don't room. So you're trying to not room with him and he's trying to room with you. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's actually a good point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you should tell our coaches to not look at the room together. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, honestly, yeah, thank you for that honest honest answer for those questions. But I'm going to move into the quick fire segment. I think you know it. And I kind of yeah. switched up a couple questions because I got, kind of got boring nice. for the life-related ones. But we're going to start off with thoughts on best of three. Uh, no. No chance. Okay. Do no. you think they should get rid of the best of three events right now? Uh, I mean, like if it's one or two like a year, then that's fine. Yeah. That like that that's actually like good. Like you know, just um, like some randomness like in the sport, which is good. Like that you see that in tennis and stuff. Yeah. But I would say just like like if there's something wrong with squash, like it's not it's not the best of three and best of five. Like yeah. like you know, you could you could improve the game in, like so many different aspects. Like that, I like have no like you know thoughts now or anything about it. But like, I don't think best of five like affects the sport negatively in any way. Like in fact, it just like it's it's been like the case for so many years. So like we need to like keep it the way it is. Yeah, you know? fair enough. Yeah. Goggles in squash. So you're not a fan of this college squash goggle situation. Oh, uh, I hate goggles so much. <laughs> And it's just because, like, I know it's like it's very important like, yeah. for your like for your like your eyes is like one of like, the most important things in your body. Like, it protects you. Like, it has like so many so many pros like that will definitely outweigh the cons. Mm -hmm. But it's just like I I kind of play maybe like three four points in each game with like blurry uh, glasses because like that's yeah, just the like fog. Sweat, you know and like. I just hate that so much, you know. Like I hate the, like yeah. how, how you know. <laughs> but juniors should, should still play with it, though. Like, juniors have to, like I think, play with it because, like, <laughs> the 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 rate or like the possibility of just getting hurt, or, like when you're a junior, because you just like you can like miscalculate, like you're like follow mm -hmm. through or anything, could be could be kind of dangerous. But yeah, you know. solo practice. Or practicing in groups? Uh, practicing groups. Practicing groups. I, I love, like, you know, I just, like, hanging out with people in general and just, like, being around people, just, like, between, like, for, like water breaks, just, like, joking around with, like, you know, yeah. different guys and talking about, you know, like, random things. Do you give so Mike I, way a hard time I, when he's coaching and you're always talking to your friends? <laughs> I gave him a hard time, like, my freshman and sophomore year, but now that, like, I'm one of the upperclassmen <laughs> on the team, I try to, like, you know, tame it down. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, commentators for squash? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. Because, like, just, like, imagine not having oh, commentators, yeah. just, like, listening to the, to to the ball. ball hit the grass, like, you know, like, four hours a day. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah, I like mm -hmm. in general. Um, college squash. Would you recommend to yeah. all junior players? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, college squash. Like, I'm obviously like part of it, so like I have to like be pro. But like in general, I think just like the balance between between squash and academics is very important. Mm -hmm. Not only not only for like, not only like for like accolades, but just. For like the personality that you become, just like man, like with like you managing your time and just like being on a team, uh, because like squash is an individual sport, but college squash brings like the team, team aspect to that. So yeah, I'm like a very big fan of college sure. squash. Thoughts on nicknames for PSA players? I I like the nicknames to be honest, like. Uh, yeah, some 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 just like need need some improvement, I think. But like, 
I think most, like mostly, like yeah, the nicknames are are, are good for the sport and like they're fun. I think mm-hmm. overall, yeah. Coaching post career? Uh, I don't oh. think so. I think that's gonna be hard. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why, but like, I, I I'm just like I think I like to look at myself as like a competitor. So like, I just can't like you know be sitting outside and just you know watching you know. <laughs> Being like on a team, but not not being the one who actually plays and you know, yeah. and it's part of you know the the competition. So, get, getting all yeah. jittery, trying to like jump on court. When you're <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it might not be my, uh, my interest. Most yeah. underrated player on tour. Most underrated player on tour. Ooh, uh, I mean, he's my favorite player, and like I I believe that he should be like. You know, like higher than that in the ranking, so I'm gonna go with a bull bar. Yeah, it's yeah. I don't like. Yeah, I I I don't know. Like, I don't know if it counts as underrated, but like, he's been my like favorite player since I was ten, and we're very good friends. And I just like I believe in him so much, you know. So I I think people just like sleep on the talent that he has, and just like you know the. The potential that he could like, you know, like be. No, I get what you're saying. He's is it, the potential is yeah. definitely there. It's, like with yeah. his results, and then you see him lose to Wolfstrop, and then you're like, oh yeah. no! But yeah, no, I get what you mean. Um, most most yeah. overrated player on tour. Most overrated player. I mean, that question is always hard. You know, <laughs> like I mean, I've seen it in like previous podcasts, <laughs> but like. I don't know. It's um, yeah. I've been giving people the out for this, but I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I actually don't. Know you don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. All right, fine. Um, okay, then I'll, I'll do the. I'll give you the easy way out on this. Um, who would you say is for you the most difficult player on tour for your playing style? Would you say? I mean, like. I think like the most difficult player to play against was like as a junior, like coming up and like like trying to play like PSAs when I was sixteen and seventeen mm-hmm. was always as hard. He was like yeah. always like the toughest player to compete against, you know, because he like he was always you know like very tough to to uh, to play against. But I, if I was to choose like another player who's not in like my age mm-hmm. category, it would be like Moment. Just because, like, I like every time I just trained with like Torrent Moment, he's like, he beats me like 11 2, 11 3, 11 wow. 1. So, well, that's, like, it, it that's interesting he, that you. He, he's such a strong player to play, and he's so quick. Like, yeah. he's so much quicker than he looks. Like, so much quicker than he looks. You know, so. <laughs> well, it's interesting you said like, a solid yeah. moment because they also play very differently, in my opinion. They're like yeah, two yeah, contrasts. Yeah, exactly. But, real, I, I actually do have a question for you. Um, how tough was it when you lost us all, especially given that you had won the world junior title bef- the year before? Yeah. yeah. Were you expecting to win it again, or you already knew at the back of your mind this could be a. So, um, like, of course, it was like very hard. You know, like I was the top seed in this world juniors. I even like we had teams after, like I was playing one, he was playing two. Mm-hmm. So, like, it was it was so hard. Of course, like on me. Uh, I I honestly knew that he like I didn't have like the 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 edge on him like going into the tournament I knew that it was gonna be tough but I I I, I think I just like trained so hard before the tournament to just like have the belief in myself yeah. to actually win it right but I think like uh, like and I don't want to also like sound you know like like as excuses or anything but you know like in this tournament like I just I didn't manage like. Like my, my, uh, I didn't manage like the pressure on me like very well because like I had like a 120 minute match in the semis Mm -hmm. and he had like a 35, 40 minute match in the semis. So, um, and also like I had like a a tough one in the court in the court in the round of 16, like a four game match in the round of 16. And, uh, you know, like it was just like I didn't like deal with the pressure well, like he did in the following world juniors because like, you know, usually, like, you have so much pressure when, like, it's your last year, like, you're defending. Yeah. You know, if, if like, if you have one more one more World Juniors and, like, your second seed, the pressure is not as high, you know? 
and he like he he dealt with it like so well like in Malaysia when he won it the next year. Yeah. Right? I kind of just like you know crumbled under pressure. Not not crumbled, but like I could have I could have dealt with the situation better. I could have like you know been more like you know composed in like my performances like leading to the finals. So of course, like I think like by the final, like by the time like we we went down to the final, he was like the more. I had like more minutes on me like going into the match. I was like more tired than like playing as hell when like you were you were like doubting you you know like not the player you might, yeah. <laughs> It's a nightmare, you know. So yeah. it was, it was of course like hard, um, and like losing in three games was also like so tough. Yeah. Like you wanted to, like you know, leave it all out there. Uh, but yeah, you know, like I knew that this this was in like July, and I was going to like Harvard in September. So I was like, okay, like no, like no time for like any regrets or like you know disappointments. Like there is a new challenge coming up. There is like a new journey. So. Yeah, and you've, you've done a great job transitioning. Um, all right, best college squash player in your opinion right now? Uh, best college squash player? Yeah. Um, um, can I say two? Yeah. Two guys? You can say two. Like Victor and Victor, Victor and Yusuf. Like, yeah, that, their match was, was amazing. Yeah. I think. And also, like, I, I, I love watching both of these guys so much. Like, I love, I just love Yusuf's game. Like, I've always been. Like even though like we've been teammates in the like national team since since yeah. we were like twelve or thirteen, but like I just love watching him. He's very entertaining to watch. His game is like so you know like joyful mm-hmm. to like just like you know watch and uh, and Victor is like very like makes things look so easy and just like you know yeah his movement is so smooth like his his game like is so simple in a way that like makes you just like admire like how easy it is for him to just like you know play yeah. the game so I mean, talk about two very polar opposite styles <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah um well, this, i think like this is like, actually like why why squash is so interesting is because like people just find different ways to win right like, yeah you'd look at these two and like you'd find oh like yusuf is such like a good shot maker but victor is such like a good mover like you know like in general like like it plays like the simple game, but you said like complicates things, but they both Balances like, out. they would like win in like different ways. Yeah. And they, and then like when they play against each other, like everyone is trying to force his game uh, and like execute their game plans. It's just like something magical that comes out of them. So. <laughs> has Victor shared his secrets of movement with you or has, has he been keeping that? To himself. He didn't actually, which, um, which raises some questions. But yeah, my my he might share it with me after the season, probably you know, before he graduates. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna move on to some life really ones. Okay, you're shipwrecked on an island. All your basics are covered. What are the two things you bring with you? Okay, uh, two things that I bring with me. Uh, okay, anything, right? Yeah. All your all your basics. Uh, I bring my laptop because you know <laughs> <laughs> I need to stay updated with the world, and I also like use my laptops like a lot, like you know, yeah, so much in general. And I, I like the second thing I wanted to be like more interesting, like more exciting. What like oh iced tea? Oh okay, <laughs> unlimited supply of iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> just that's I might see. Yeah. Right. I I'm also like I'm just answering this for like, you know, the mentor. Like I yeah, yeah. I like I would have you know like a better like answer, <laughs> but it's just I wanna emphasize how much I love. Yeah, yeah. Tea, no. You know? Got it. Um Peach tea. Yeah. Peach tea. Peach <laughs> yeah. Um if you were given the option to know how you were gonna die, would you wanna know? No. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't when I looked at that question, I was like, I probably wouldn't want to know either. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you had the to change your name, what would it be and why would it be that name? My name. I've never heard that question yeah. before. Really try to spice yeah, it yeah. up this time, Marwan. <laughs> Catch you off guard. <laughs> That's nice. Uh what would my name be? I think Marwan in general is like kind of like a like a it's like first of all, it's not a common name back in Egypt. And, oh really? Uh, which is which is which is yeah, okay. which is like you know. But uh, I would 
I would go with something like I would go with something like that has an obvious meaning, you know. Like I was watching like this this um uh, I was watching like I'm a big soccer fan, so like I, I always like how how like the last names of of each each uh, like of like some some football players or like some soccer some soccer yeah. players have like meaning to it. Like this this might be might might be funny, but like Daniel Drinkwater. <laughs> Drinkwater is like the last name. And but, like and or, or or like some like players in like African Cup because like Egypt is now playing in yeah. like the African Cup of Nations. So like they have like some of them have like their last name is like success or like faith. <laughs> So you don't want a straightforward last. Okay, I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay. I, I would like. You know what? Like, I would. Uh, I would like my like last name like to be like like Joel King. I think Joel like King's last name is like. Oh yeah. You know. I you, yeah. So I, I that is a pretty badass like name, King. In that, yeah, yeah, exactly. In that context. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, best and worst purchase you've ever made. <laughs> best and worst purchase I've ever made. Uh, best purchase I've ever made. Oh, I mean, like funny enough, like that hoodie, <laughs> that hoodie, like in Black Friday, like I. That's a very funny story. So, like I, like I had a friend, yeah, uh, from high school visit me who studies in uh, in a in a, in the University of Central F- Florida. Mm. And he was visiting me over Thanksgiving, and like we were like shopping, in, like you know, like Boston, and like we saw this hoodie for like like you know, like X number, yeah. And then the and then I was like, ah, eh, maybe it's too much for, uh, like for it, and like ah, uh, maybe maybe not. I'm not gonna buy it today, yeah. like even though it was like Black Friday. And then the very next day, I saw it with like fifty percent off, like fifty percent <laughs> off, and like my friend bought it for like the full price. And the next day, I got. Oh, he got it for full price. He got oh, it for what a... So I, I, yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> I, I got it the next day, and he was like, uh, "How much was it?" And I didn't want to tell him so that like he wouldn't be like, you know, annoyed. Or <laughs> but you want to stand so, up yeah, a bit? Let's, be... let's see the hoodie. I want to... It's like it's a, like a very basic. Oh, one, the champion! Like, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. The, yeah, that's a. I love wearing in general, and like I. I love like sitting like that. Usually, when I'm with the team or anything. I just yeah. this looks so much. It. Gotcha. Um, worst purchase. Okay, yeah, that's that's actually funny. Like now that I just looked at it, like I mean, I think after freshman year, I was like, I, I never read books, right? Like I, I just don't <laughs> like sitting down like reading. Yeah. So like after freshman year, I wanted to be like more, you know, like intellectual, a scholar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more intellectual. I want to change some stuff. So, like, I bought two books. Like, one about like the history of Egypt, and one just like how to come become like a better investor. Mm-hmm. And I remember this. Like, my mom was like, "Why? Like, <laughs> like we all know that we're not going to right?" And I'm like, "No, no. I like I've changed that over the past year. You don't know me now and stuff." But then, like, I, I, I think, like, I read like twenty pages in like each book, and just, like, you know, having <laughs> screw to... this, I'm not reading this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say they were the worst purchase, but like they were like I, maybe I should start reading them. I don't know, Marlon. It sounds like a, a terrible purchase. I'm a, from your <laughs> um, okay. Um, what job or sport if it weren't for squash? Easy uh, soccer. Soccer player. player. Uh, pre- English Premier League. Premier League. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, favorite non-squash athlete? Favorite non-squash athlete? Yeah. yeah. Michael Jordan. Oh, okay. I'm a big Michael Jordan fan. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. How about favorite squash athlete that's active right now? Favorite squash athlete, Ali Farag. Yeah. Okay. We're going to wrap it up with some Instagram questions. Before I do this, oh, I just no. need to say... If you have nothing nice to say in the fucking Instagram questions and are just putting hateful comments, honestly, fuck off. Don't waste my time writing that shit up. But okay, we'll get into some because I got some really good questions for you. Um, so someone asked, teardrop or closed throat racket? Um, I play with like the round racket, so like okay. um, 
I, I honestly like don't don't feel like any any difference. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you Just switch like around rackets uh, all the time. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. That's true. Like I, I also like I have been used to like the the one I play with now. So but I, I, I don't think the, like it makes so much difference. It's just like every player and like the, just like the, how like the racket that they they prefer, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. That was also by the meme page. No context. BSA. Another person. Shout out Ricky. Sq. Said anything top college squash players wish the CSA to do to ease transition to pro. For example, lowering the tins. Mm, that's actually a very good idea. I mean, yeah, yeah. You just agree? Yeah, you agree with that? I I would agree. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. playing with like lower tins would would definitely make it easier for the people who wants to go pro. Yeah, and at the same time, like in general, like after you finish juniors, like. Like you're either not gonna play squash again, or you're gonna go pro. Right. And if you're gonna uh, go pro after, then like, okay, just make it easier on them and just like have it 17 inch. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a good idea. Shout out Jacob Kagan, fellow nest hacker. He said, "I think it's a banter, but too close for comfort against Matthias and Drexel. Should they be top five? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> let's just say that clearly Drexel took out the oxygen in their facility." To make sure they had a closer match, I'll answer that one for you. Um, <laughs> I think I think this, these are from your friends, but I think one guy asked, "Why is he so bad at FIFA?" Oh my god, no way! Marlon clearly not a not a great FIFA player. Oh, I'm I'm like the best on the <laughs> team, and I think like, I I ne- I'm definitely better than the guy who posted that, but like. We don't have to say his name now, but I would want to know who posted that. I'll I'll tell you right after this interview. (laughs) Um, And then I think this is coming from your teammate, Connor Stoltz. He said his favorite match ever. My favorite match ever. Wow. I mean, it's got to be the World Junior Final. Yeah. Just like for the... For how high the stakes were and just like the, the event itself and how I've changed like after like how it kind of changed my life. Yeah. Um I was gonna yeah. wrap it up there, but I, another question caught my eye. Um shout out Robert for this one. He said, is he single? <laughs> uh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know everyone. Marwan is out there <laughs> in the market. But yeah, no, I'm gonna thank you, Marwan, for doing this. I'm gonna wrap it up there, folks. Um but appreciate you doing this at such a late hour. <laughs> No, thank you, Sean. Like, yeah, I had like so much fun, obviously. And like, as you, as I told you, like, I, I, I follow these like podcasts. I think they're good for like college squash. They're very entertaining because like so many people compete in college squash. So it's good to just like get insights from like players about like their lifestyle and just like how they view the whole process.